This is going to be a long look at character rigging and playing out your animation for a character. There are several ways of doing it and we're going to go over a few of them in this tutorial. First, we're going to start with just basic shape layers. I'm going to use a rounded rectangle tool for the torso. And you could always scroll down here, go into the rectangular path. You could adjust the roundness to what you want. I'm going to do about there, sure. And I'm going to turn off the stroke, so it's just a solid fill. And I'll put my anchor point using the pan behind tool. I'm going to change the anchor points up here by the camera, the pan behind tool right there. And if you hold down command or control, it will snap. You could also hold down shift as well and snap it to a corner or an edge. Command will help you snap. I'm just going to put it there for now. Now for this next part, I'm going to do some arms. Like I'll do a bicep. And then I'll just use this first move the anchor point. Let me zoom in so you can see what's going on. Okay, again, I get my pan behind tool up here at the top. I can hold down command or control, and I'm going to snap it to the top middle of this layer. So I'm going to name this bicep, and I'll name this torso. I'm going to duplicate the bicep by selecting the layer and hitting command D. And I'm going to name this forearm. And I'm just going to move it over so we could see where it's at. And then lastly, I'm just going to hit Command Shift A to deselect everything. Because if I've got it still selected, it'll draw shape within this shape layer. I want an independent shape layer. And I'm just going to use a circle for this. Just something nice and simple. And I'll have this represent my hand. I just got to move the anchor point for it. It's over here. Oops. Sorry about that. Line it up there. Okay. So this is the first method. You could use several shapes to break down the character. The more layers you have, the more control you have over your animation. Now, the next thing you want to know is lining up your character. Uh, I'm going to use my black arrow tool, the select tool, to move my layers. So I'll just put this over here, and I'll join this up with that. And then join the hand up there. Let me select all three of them and align them. I'm going to align them through the middle. Now they're all lined up across the middle. That's what I want. Okay, the way, the next step, I've got my anchor points and I've got my layers. The next step is parenting. I'm going to parent the bicep to the torso. You could do it by using the pick whip right over here and dragging to the layer you want. That's one way of doing it. I grab my pick whip, sorry about that. I grab the pick whip on the bicep layer and I drag it to the word torso. That's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it is with the drop down menu. On the forearm layer, I'm going to I'm going to parent the bice the forearm to the bicep. And I'm going to parent the hand to the forearm. So the way this goes, this hand is parented to the forearm. The forearm is parented to the bicep. The bicep is parented to the body, the torso. That's the basic gist of it. So what this means, if I rotate, I hit the R key on my bicep. If I rotate my bicep, the forearm and the hand will move with it. So they're going to stay connected, and that's going to stay connected to the body. But also, doing it this way, if I hit the R key on my forearm and I rotate my forearm, I can independently rotate 
the forearm while keeping it connected to the body. And right here I want to show you something. This is the reason why you want rounded edges because you want your layers, if you've got squared edges, you'll see gaps when the character moves. So just be careful of that when you line up your layers and don't over move them so you don't see those edges. And as I said before, moving each layer, moving the bicep, I can animate the bicep and the forearm independently now as well as the hand. So I'll demonstrate that. Um, I'll put a keyframe here by clicking the stopwatch for rotation. I'll go forward. I'm just picking an arbitrary time. I'll go down like that. And then for the forearm, I'm going to change the motion of that. I'll start the animation here. And over here, I'll just have it go out that way, sure. Move the layer right there. So you see the two different arms moving differently, or I should say the two different parts of the arms. And I could also independently rotate the hand, hang the R key. So all three parts can independently animate from each other, but still stay together because of the parenting. That's one way of doing it. So you would set up your character. I'd do the same thing for the right arm and similar for the legs. Uh, the legs, you'd have a thigh and then a shin and a foot. And you would parent the foot to the shin, the shin to the thigh, the thigh to the torso. That's one way of doing it with shape layers. This same method would also work with Photoshop layers or Illustrator layers. If you had very ornate, well-drawn characters or you painted it or you just had a whole bunch of textures on them, this technique would work for that. Now I'm going to keep the torso and remove that arm. Here's a second technique. You could use a combination of shape layers and then paths for the limbs or for whatever part of your character that this would apply to. So I'm going to use my pen tool, which is right up here. And I've got nothing selected because if I got something selected, I'm going to create another shape in the shape layer or start making a mask. So I'm just going to put one point here, click and drag, and another point here and click and drag. I'm going to turn off the fill by clicking on the word fill. And there's my fill option, so I'm going to hit none. And then I'm going to click on the word stroke. Oop, I got to hit the OK key. Sorry, I forgot. Then we'll click on the word stroke, give it a solid stroke. And I'm going to increase the width so you can see. And this is a different color, and this is great because you'll be able to see what's going on. Now, first thing I want to do, I'm going to move that anchor point, which is right over here. And to move that, I use the pan behind tool up here by the camera. And I'm just going to move that right up here to the top. And I'm going to hold down the command or control key to snap it there. Now, I don't want butt caps for this. So I'm going to twirl down my contents, my shape, my stroke. And right here, within the stroke options, you've got butt cap. And I'm going to change it to round cap. And the miter joint, I'm going to change it to a round joint. So now it's rounded off at the edges. This is where you can change your color and the stroke, or you could add dashes if you want. We'll get into that a little, a little bit later on this uh, tutorial. So I'm going to name this uh, left arm um, noodle, because this is going to animate like a noodle, because I've got curve points. Now, you may have seen this on um, Cartoon Network or other places online, but basically, with these curved bezier handles, you're going to get a noodly animation because it's not rigid. To animate this, I'm going to twirl down the path and add a keyframe. Then I just move forward in time. With the pen tool selected, I can hold down shift and click on one of the points to deselect it. Now I can, oops, let me undo that. Now I'm just going to use my move tool 
and I can select one or the other. Now, with paths, you can not only move the anchor point like I did here, but you can also move the Bezier curves over time. Like such. And what that's going to do is give you an animation like this. It's very noodly and not very rigid because I don't have any hard edges or corners. And obviously you would select your frames, your keyframes, hover over right click and easy ease them to get a smoother motion in and out of your keyframes. This is using two points with Bezier curve handles. That's one way of doing it if you want a noodly animation or if you've got something that you're animating on the character that you want to have uh, a very loose, not rigid feel to it, you would do this way with Bezier curves. Now I'm going to grab my pen tool again up here at the top. Nothing is selected. I'm going to just click, not click and drag. Click one more time and the last time. And then I've got three straight points. I'm going to rename this arm rigid. Now, even though I've got straight points, I still want to get rid of those butt caps. So I'm going to go twirl down my shape to the stroke, change the butt cap to a round cap, and a round join, and that's fixed. So now instead of two points, I've got three here. So this is like a shoulder, an elbow, and a wrist. So to animate this, I just twirl down my path, click the stopwatch, move the playhead to where you want it first, to where you want your animation to start. Always move the playhead first. So I move the playhead, click the stopwatch, now I'm going to move forward in time, and I have the pen tool selected. I held down shift to select that first point, so I can move that first point, and I could then move this point individually. I can move forward a little bit more and move this one and then individually that one. And this is going to, I'll easy ease these. I select all of them. I just mark key clicked around them. Another thing you could do if you want to select a whole lot of keyframes, if you want to get all of the keyframes, you just click on the word. Do not click on the stopwatch again. Clicking the stopwatch once starts your animation. Clicking the stopwatch a second time gets rid of all your keyframes, but clicking the word like path, we'll select all of them in that. So here's the difference between the two animations. This one is more natural and has a rigid structure like the arm would because there's bones in it. And this one is more noodly and loose if you're going for something like that, like a worm or a snake, octopus tentacles, you would do Bezier curves. And this is with three squared off edges and no Bezier curves. So that's two ways of doing your character. You could use paths for limbs and other parts of the character and then animate not only the anchor points, but you could also animate Bezier curve handles. Or you could do it with shape layers that are linked together and parent them and move it that way. That's a second way. Now, I'm going to delete these arms. I'm going to start fresh again. This is a more complex way of building a character and keeping everything layered together. So I've got my torso, I've got my pen, nothing is selected. So I'm going to click and drag here and we'll do the noodle arm method. Sure. Why not? And click and drag one more time. So I've got two paths, uh, two anchor points to worry about. Again, I'm going to round this. So I'm going to go to my contents, shape, stroke, Give it a round cap, round cap, and a round join. Perfect. Now, this is where things change. This is going to be the skin of the arm. And I'm going to think of a color to make my character just so it stands off of my torso. Uh, we'll say that's a shirt on it. So for this color, I'll make the skin color green. Sure, why not? It's from outer space. Now, this is the most important part. I'm going to build like sleeves and stripes on the sleeves and you could even make a watch here. So 
to have everything follow this initial path when you animate it, like the sleeves, the stripes on the sleeves, the watch, the first thing you do, I'm going to name this content. All right, so first I'm going to name the shape layer. I'm going to call this left arm. You always want to work naming your layers that people know if they've got to work on your file. Now, my left arm has a contents. There's one shape in it. This. This is going to be the skin. So I'm going to hit return to name it. And if you don't want to hit return, you could always right click and go to rename. That's another way of doing that. So there's my skin. It's inside the arm. The skin, I click on the path right here before I do anything else. There's now a keyframe assigned to this. So I'm going to select the skin contents and duplicate it by hitting Command D. I'm not on the arm. That would duplicate the entire shape layer. Inside the shape layer, in the contents, I am selecting the word skin right there. That's where I'm selecting, that layer right there. I hit Command D there, and now I'm going to name this sleeve. The next step, no matter what you're doing with your character, for the duplicate layer, always remove the keyframe. So I'm clicking off the stopwatch, but then I'm going to Alt or Option click on that stopwatch for the sleeve, and an expression appears, and I'm going to pick whip it to the word path for the skin layer. Okay, what this is going to do, whenever I move my skin layer, this sleeve will move with it and perfectly follow this curve. And I will show you. My sleeve, I'm going to make it the same color as the shirt. So I'm going to go to my color, use my eyedropper, and click on the shirt. Now the sleeve fully covers the arm. To fix this, first thing I'm going to do, I want squared off caps, not butt caps. I mean round caps, I want butt caps. So I'm going to go to the stroke and I'm going to change the round cap to a butt cap and the round join, I'll make it a mite join. So I fix that, it's going to have squared off edges for the sleeve like it should. Now for the sleeve, I'm going to select the word sleeve and I'm going to add to it right here with the add button. With that layer selected, I'm going to add trim paths. And this way I can change where it starts or ends for the stroke. So I'm going to try the end and I'm going to try the start. Let me see if my skin color changed. Yeah, see my skin color went red. Okay, so I just changed it back to green and the skin looks like it turned to a butt cap as well. So I'm going to make the skin a round cap and a round join. Okay, so now you can see this is my sleeve and this is the skin. So I'm going back to my sleeve with the trim path and I'm going to just figure out where I want the sleeve. If I want it to be a long sleeve, obviously I'm going to adjust the end to a higher number so it goes further down the arm. But I'm going to have it be about just a little, about, a little bit about where the above where the elbow would be. Okay, so we're going to test our animation. When I, I'm going to hold down shift with the pen tool and select that dot. When I move this Bezier curve handle, you see the sleeve moves with it. The expression worked and everything is set up perfectly. So I'm going to duplicate my sleeve layer moving forward so I don't have to do that expression anymore. Every duplicate of this will automatically be expression pick whipped to the skin layer. So I only had to do it once. Now I've got this weird green spot where the shoulder is joining up. I'm going to fix that. First, I'm going to show you a way. I'm going to fix it and then there'll still be a little bit of green there. And I'm going to fix that by making the sleeve a little longer, I mean a little wider than the arm, which it would be in real life. So with the sleeve selected down here in my shape layer contents, I'm going to hit Command D to duplicate that. I'm going to hit Enter to rename it. I'm going to call this shoulder. And it's going to be the same color as the sleeve. Now for the shoulder, I want a round cap. 
so that it meets up with the shoulder properly, not a square cap or a butt cap. So I'm going to go to my stroke, change it to a round cap. I'll change the miter joint to a round cap. And I don't want this round edge here at the end. So all I have to do now is adjust my trim path so that the shoulder is a lot smaller than the sleeve so that you don't get this rounded off edge here. So I go to the trim path for the shoulder. And now you see it's already smaller than that. So I'm going to do the smallest I can get to before you start seeing the green because I want to put some stripes here and I don't want this shoulder getting in the way. So I'm now going to duplicate the sleeve for the stripes. I'm going to hit Command D and I'm going to hit Enter to rename it. I'll call the stripes. I'm going to drag this above the shoulder and see if, uh, whoop. there we go. I dragged it above. So now it's on top of that. And this should have, I'm going to look at my stroke. This has butt cap and a butt joint. Fine. I need to make a different color so we could actually see the stripes. So to make it nice and easy to see, I'll pick blue. Now I've got to go to my shoulder and the sleeve and I'm going to make it two pixels uh, two pixels bigger so I selected the shoulder I went up here made the sleeve a little thicker I mean the shoulder and now I'm going to make the sleeve a little thicker and now there won't be any stray uh, green line showing because this is a little bit thicker than the skin and I'll make my stripes 54 so now they're all just a little bit thicker than the skin layer so I've already got a trim path for the sleevelets have end where the other sleeve ended, sure. Now offset, if I move the offset, you see how it moves the stroke along the path. We're going to get to that in a moment. So I want stripes. So I'm going to go to my stroke. I'm going to twirl that down. This is for the stripes layer. And where it says dashes down here, I'm going to click there's dashes. I'm going to click the add button. Now I can choose however many stripes or how thin I want them to be in the dashes. And I could also offset them. You could animate this as well if you wanted to. So say you had train tracks, you would use dashes and animate the offset and it would look like train tracks going off into the distance. So that's just a quick little trick of using animate uh, offset and dashes. You could do that with film reel sprockets. You know, doesn't have to just be for character design. So when I move my arm now, I'm going to go to the skin layer because this is where the keyframe is. And I'm going to go forward in time. With my pen tool select, I'm going to hit shift on one of the endpoints. So I've got just that selected. And I'm going to move that and go forward a little bit more. Move the path that I want. And you want to try and keep your proportions correct unless you want a surrealistic type of animation. I'm going to select all those, hover over it, right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease. If you want to, you could change the motion with the speed graph, but I'm just showing you how the arm, the skin of the arm, the sleeve, the stripes, and the shoulder are all following the path as it moves. You could then duplicate this layer if you wanted. If the person were doing something where they move uniformly, like jumping jacks, you would animate just one arm, duplicate it, and then mirror it with the scaling. I'll show you that in a second. So here's my arm. I'm going to move the anchor point by holding down control to snap it to there. So with my left arm select, I'm going to hit Command D and hit enter. I'll call this right arm. Now, to make it mirrored, I'm going to hit S for scale. I'm going to click off of the non -unif the uniform chain. So it's non-uniformly scaling. The first number, X, that's side to side. The second number is Y, up and down. The X, I'm going to make negative 100, only the X. What this will do is it flips it on the X axis. I'm holding down shift just to move it straight across. So now I've got two arms moving together 
as if you're going to do jumping jacks or lifting weights. Maybe the person's doing arm curls. If I wanted wristbands, I could duplicate the stripe layer and the sleeve layer and then use the offset to move it down the arm. That's how you would do that. If I want the arms to be moving independently, I would just keyframe this arm different from this one. Maybe he's doing something like uh, dancing and this arm's moving differently. That's You just change your keyframing on it so they're not moving uniformly. The last step is you're going to want to parent all your limbs and the head and whatnot to the main character. So I'm going to parent the arms to the torso and I can use the pick whip by clicking and dragging like I said before. Click and drag the arm to where it says torso or I could just simply go to the drop down menu and choose the layer that I want. So now both arms are parented to the torso. So if I move the torso The arms still move, they stay parented to the torso, and the torso moves independently. So this is a way of keeping your character together. And let's leave my main character. Okay. You'll get far more successful animation if this is broken up into layers. Things are going to start crossing over each other and it's going to get complicated real fast. But I had to find an image to show puppet pinning. Puppet pinning is great if you've got photos or textures or uh, items of cloth because the texture and the images move with the puppet pin so it gives it a little bit more of a natural look. It's a completely different style than animating with paths. The puppet pin tool is up here by the roto brush. So there's puppet pinning and then there's the starch pin tool. Puppet pins will give you a nice loose uh, animation like for snakes or um, worms. But if you need to starch parts of it so they don't move and have a little bit more rigidity as if it had a skeletal system, that's when you start using the puppet starch pins. And I'm going to go over that in a moment. So first I'm going to just grab the plain old puppet pin tool. Now you need more than one pin. If I move, once you add a pin, it automatically adds keyframes. If I move this pin, the whole character moves with it because nothing else is pinned down. So I'm going to put pins wherever I feel they're needed. And don't forget, you're going to need to pin down the character as well. Because the more pins you have, the more th parts you have that are not going to move. Like, I don't have this tentacle right here pinned. Watch what happens when I move this. I've got enough pins around it to not need to worry about that. But I'm still going to put some here just for this demonstration. Okay. So that's a good enough amount of pins for this demonstration. Actually, I'll do right here too. The more pins you have, the more you have to animate, but the more control you have. Okay, so there's my pins. All you have to do next, the fast way of finding your pins is to select the layer and hit the U key. And there's all the pins I placed. The next thing you do is you move the playhead and then you just move your pins. Um, the further you move the playhead, the slower the motion is going to be. The closer you move the playhead and then move your pins, the faster the animation will be. So I'll do about here. And now I'm going to start with my puppet pins. All I did was just clicked on one of these pins in here to see them again. So I'm going to move this here. I'll move this one up this way. That one down there. That like that. Now you see this tentacle move with it because I didn't have it pinned down. I'm going to move a little further out. I'm going to drift this a little further away from the body. Move like that. And then like that. Move a little bit more. When you move a small amount, you're going to get smoother motion as opposed to moving a larger amount. Then you're going to get more motion over time. Now you see how this is moving with it. I'm just showing you some of the technical difficulties you'll run across. And try and keep the shape consistent 
with its time. So when you've got your puppet pins and they're all looking the way you want, you select them, right click, and easy ease them. So you see how you get a nice smooth animation off of that. Now, if you're doing something like bird wings and how bird wings have to bend up like this, you could do just one wing up, copy your pins, move your playhead, then you just hit paste. Now you've got the same exact number of pins, but if I want to move in the opposite motion, I just right click and choose keyframe assistant, time reverse layers. So now those ones, we're going to watch this far limb right there. So it's going to move up. And it's going to start moving back to where it originally was because I reversed the keyframes for that one pin alone. So you'd have to do all the limbs, I mean all the keyframes to that to make it work correctly. I'm just showing you how to copy and paste keyframes and also time reverse them. But that's not all we're covering with puppet pins right now. So if I move this pin right here, this whole thing's going to curve because there's no rigidity between them. They're just loose nice natural puppet pins. So say this is the shoulder and this is the elbow of a human arm and there's a bone here. What you would then do, you go back up to your puppet pin tool, right up here, you click on it, and you choose the puppet starch tool. I'm going to put a starch pin between the two of them. And this is red. Now, if I change the expansion on it, it'll show this is the mesh. Now my mesh expansion, let me change that down. I expanded it a little bit. I want the mesh to go past the image because that way if I move the pins you don't lose any of the image. That's what expansion does. Density I'll increase the density on that pin and it should make this part a lot more firm, less rigid. So let's watch what happens when I move this yellow pin right now. Go back to my normal puppet pin. There's no longer this curve here. This part is staying more rigid because of the starch pin. So that's a way to make your characters move as if you've got bones. You just keep moving the playhead, moving your pins, and figuring out where you need rigidity. And like I showed before, make sure you've got enough of a mesh by clicking show mesh to make sure your mesh goes past the fine details so that you don't have texture of cloth or part of the photo that you're working on not animate along with it. You could fix that by expanding it a little bit. And that's it for now for character rigging and some techniques for character animation.